can we be healthy on a vegan diet? And I think most vegans will be like, and we should just go whole foods plant based and you take a B12 supplement and uh, an iron supplement and sprinkle some uh, flax seeds on your oats, you'll be good. Not as cut and dry as that, guys, unfortunately. So there's two aspects to a healthy diet. One is re removing inflammation, which a zero-carb carnivore diet does inherently, and nutrient density, which a zero-carb carnivore diet actually doesn't do unless you purposely seek nutrient-dense animal foods like organ meats and high-quality just any high quality animal food. So in order to reduce inflammation, we can either consume like basic plant foods that only need to be heated and are pretty anti-inflammatory in their natural state, such as sweet potatoes, seaweed, blueberries, avocado, macadamia nuts, coconut oil, just, and uh, you know, a lot of the time these foods that are good for you in the context of a vegan diet, vegans are afraid to eat because of their fat content, but that's a whole different discussion. And, uh, you know, hey, and the other thing is people never blame the vegan diet, you know, they blame the person they say, oh, you're not doing it right, or oh, you're anorexic, or oh, you have an eating disorder, or oh, you need to supplement B12. They always blame the person, not the diet. And even when someone comes out with Crohn's or IBS, they still blame the, the person. So what are you going to do? But uh, to remove inflammation, you need to either consume those low inflammatory foods inherently, primarily, and the foods that you do consume, like grains, legumes, seeds, foods that are inflammatory, they need to be either fermented or soaked for days, you know, switching out the water, and it usually has to be salted water, naturally fermented sourdough breads, miso and natto instead of other soy products, you know, no, ref no processed vegan foods. Those are, and especially no seed oils. That's how we remove inflammation from a vegan diet. And most people don't understand what foods actually are inflammatory or how to do that preparation stuff. So I can't go really any further into that in this video because it would just be too long. But just removing inflammation basic first step. Second step is increasing nutrient density and we know that the vegan diet is deficient in vitamin B12 and vitamin iron in comparison to the standard American diet which is you know if you're doing worse than the standard American diet you're screwed you really are and that is not good not a good look so to speak it, because the standard American diet is literally the unhealthiest diet that I can think of. So Iron supplement, B12 supplement, and as with all these supplements, what has to be considered is bioavailability in the human body, how the supplement is made, you know, are there rancid fats in the supplement or is there something harmful in the supplement process that might hurt our health, you know, it does this supplement in its plant-based form cause liver damage. Those are some things we actually have to consider in the context of plant-based vitamins. So for vitamin B12, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of stuff done out on that that you guys can Google. For iron, I think the iron supplement is made from hemp, and I think there is heme iron that's made for vegans, but these next few supplements that are going to, I'm going to talk about are the supplements needed and the vitamins needed to absorb iron, because just taking heme iron doesn't mean it's absorbed in your digestive tract. I go over this in my Is Meat Carcinogenic video, where I talk about how heme iron is carcinogenic because it's not consumed in its natural state where it would have these other fat soluble vitamins in order to be metabolized properly. So those other vitamins are vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and I have cod liver oil here which obviously isn't vegan but uh, cod liver oil is vitamin A and vitamin and uh, vitamin, what is it, omega, omega 3 fatty acids. So uh, instead of the cod liver oil you'd be consuming a vitamin A supplement in the form of retinoic acid and you'd be consuming an algae supplement for DHA. So uh, I guess one thing to consider about these vitamins is the processing and you know in the case of like vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 and even omega, the, especially the algae is they get a giant vat of this stuff, they press it, they use solvents like hexane to refine it and it's, it's a steam distilled process. It's very questionable on whether or not these supplements are good for our health when taken every day because of how they're made. And not to mention all the other additives in supplement capsules such as stearic acid which is an oxidized vegetable fat. So there's definitely some negative things to consider before taking these vitamins but they are necessary in my opinion to be in optimal health on a vegan diet. So vitamin D3 is something you'll hear about a lot. The nice thing is I think if you get like an hour or two of full body sun exposure a couple times a week you're good. Uh, you know the 15 minutes a day on your hands and face that is conventional wisdom dogma that is nowhere near enough vitamin D3 guys and if, if you look around this is a 10,000 IU supplement most people do take 
uh, five to 10,000 IU per day. And again, keep in mind, if you want a vegan supplement, this is made from sheep's wool, so this is not vegan. Uh, the next vitamin is vitamin K2. And vitamin K2 can be obtained from natto, but most people have to supplement this even on a zero carb carnivore diet because the only foods that really contain vitamin K2 are like organ meats, especially liver, egg yolks, aged cheeses, pretty much any fermented animal food or fermented food in general. In regards to the caliber oil, we would be taking a, vit a vitamin A supplement in the form of retinoic acid. And although you might say, well, beta carotene can convert to vitamin A, that is questionable. And retinoic acid is the most important precursor in a lot of metabolic processes in humans. The problem is that retinal palmitate is known to have adverse effects on the liver and carotenoid conversion rates in plant foods are questionable at best. Uh, and it, it varies from person to person. So a retinol supplement might be your biggest concern and to find one that works here. And that is imperative of all these other vitamins, I think. And that's probably the most important one to take, maybe with the exception of vitamin D3. And I guess the final vitamin is algae oil for your DHA, your omega-3s. And for people that say, oh, you just need flax seeds. Well, in my, I did a video on flax seeds and I spoke about how and summarized that you'd pretty much need to consume a thousand calories worth of flax oil every day to get the equivalent amount of DHA that you would get from one serving of fatty fish, like a hundred calories worth of mackerel, which is insane to think about. So you definitely need to take an algae oil supplement, flax seed, chia seed, whatever, nuts you're eating, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to raise your blood DHA levels. And, you know, the important, I guess to touch on the importance of these vitamins, we know there's obvious energy metabolism for B12 and iron. There's vitamin D3 for hormonal function and uh, bone remineralization, very important. Same with vitamin K2, heart and bone health. Vitamin A, retinoic acid, precursor to gene expression, cell differentiation, as well as uh, vitamin, uh, the omega-3 fatty acids being imperative for brain health, brain function, as well as developmental health. If there are any vegans out there, I'd love to kind of collaborate with you. And although you might be thinking, oh, what's this clown talking about? He follows a carnivore diet. Why is he? Well, have you heard any other vegans talk about these foods in the way I do? I have very extensive culinary knowledge and past plant-based diet experimenting that's helped me understand how to reduce anti-nutrient content in those foods. And that combined with my understanding of fat soluble vitamins leads me to believe that I am the only person talking about how to actually be optimally healthy on a vegan diet. So uh, if any of you guys are vegans and you'd like to reach out to me and maybe we can discuss the plan you're doing now and incorporating these and then seeing how your health changes, I would love to do that. Uh, I guess to we should do the makeup check, right? So let me just... Guys, nothing on the napkin, nothing in my hair. I just pushed it back today. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, hey, just share the channel, you know. Uh, whatever the person is interested in, whether it's looking at Aladdin or, I don't know. Uh, I mean, especially this video is about vegans, so I'm sure there's plenty of you guys could share this one. Uh, but whatever the person is interested in, just make something up about the video that would interest them and, and whatever. Uh, if you guys want to check out my Patreon, I have a story about me on there, my life. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't ask you guys to do anything, you know, just do whatever you want to do. I have some social media down there. I'm starting to post on Twitter more. This is like my first week on Twitter and uh, my Instagram, I'm trying to post some more as well. And I've been on like Primal Lunch Health recently. I've been on Heal Your Gut Guys channel, a nice talk on there as well as the Carnivore Cast going to be in a week or two. I'm not sure when he's going to finish editing it, but uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I will be doing some vegan videos in the future in regards to, you know, my favorite plant-based foods. And of course, we got to make fun of a vegan at least once a week, right? <laughs>